welcome. This day I wish to offer to you some concepts to consider or reconsider, as the case may be, regarding the meaning of a human life, the meaning of a heart that beats, a mind, brain that thinks, a life that has purpose, direction, the purpose of life itself, and how life engages soul, soul engages spirit, and a life is lived and lived well. It may seem to you as your thoughts occur to you one by one or in jumbled order as they sometimes arrive, that you are one being, one person, one identity, one individual living one human embodiment or lifetime, life stream. From your perception, it is natural that that is the case, that you would claim for yourself an identity associated with your namesakes and all that you have dressed yourself in. You have dressed yourself in names and titles. You have dressed yourself in a gender and in a chronological age that had a beginning as it was told or described to you and has a projected end, a transition, a transformation, or like that. You have dressed yourself in the roles that occupy your life and your thoughts, and based upon these roles, you dress yourself accordingly in clothing, in how you manage your day, your hours, and your after hours. Even the roles that you dress yourself in determine to some degree your sleep and wake patterns, your preferable foods and choices, how you go out about the day, because after all, you lead with your identity or with these roles. And yet there is something taking place on the inner planes. There are inner thoughts and outer thoughts, inner planes and outer planes. And while a part of you goes about life participating in the roles and the commitments that you make, another part of you wonders as to the meaning of life, as to whether you are doing it or getting it right or wrong, as to how you are managing it, how far along you are in the projected goal or the idea. So who or what within you thinks about this? And what roles does the soul and the spirit play in this? It is important to consider that particularly now when there is a changing of the God, a changing of the age, just on the horizon already. The questions therefore, who am I? What am I? What am I meant to do or be? These questions rise and fall, rise and fall like the oceans, like the tides, coming and going. You find small answers at a time, and when they are somewhat satisfying, you then go about your day or your life until they rise again, wanting to know more. This is a fine time, then, to explore this subject, to learn more, to know more. But in order to truly receive this answer, it is important for you to begin to think of yourself as more than one I, more than one identity. Now to make it simple for you, you can continue to think of yourself as an individual, but an individual life stream. For instance, you are an individual stream in the way that a river is individual and separate from other rivers. However, the flow of life that you are has many twists and turns, and this as well is composed of many droplets of water. So you are one river, one flow of life, one individual beingness made up of many distinct thoughts and some identities 
In some ways, each of these has a purpose of its own. This is not meant to confuse you. If you will think of your bodies, for instance, your body is one individual body. It is yours. You are its owner. It has been designed for you. And everything that you do with it or to it or for it is to your benefit. At the same time, it is made up of many individual cells. And these cells first have allegiance to the organ of the body which they support or to the blood stream, its own life stream. So their identity, their purpose is first to the body, subsequently to how you manage your body. So it is the same with how you are organized in life. The soul, the greater purpose, the orchestra leader of all aspects of you includes every thought, every idea, every eventuality, everything you might consider, everything that is creatively you, everything that you have expressed now or before, or preferences that you may choose to express in the future. Your soul is a composite of all things that are you and all things that are you in reference to the universe, to all things without exception. You then are your soul. The difficulty for humanity is when it thinks of itself as separate from its soul. It understands that it has a soul and that the soul in some way directs the life. But you see, for the most part, you think of yourself as separate from soul and that one day your soul will reveal itself to you or that one day you will know it, merge with it, be more comfortable with it or like that. You are soul. You are not separate from soul. Soul is not a visible part of you. It is you more than you are you. You see, now if you were to think of a computer, are you the physical box, the computer? Are you the brain of the computer, how it has been arranged to remember things for you? Are you the processor of the computer, the part that goes and seeks and finds and brings and suggests as quickly as possible? Or are you the variety of programs that you have assigned to your computer, all of these having an eye, a purpose, an identity, and all of these must first serve their own program's nature before they can serve the operating system of the computer. So you see, which one of these is most associated with soul? Well, in essence, none of these. Soul, then, is that which surrounds the computer. It is that which gives the computer purpose and reason for being. It is that which exists before and after the computer. It is the memories and everything that you have stored in the computer. It is its purpose for being or seeking or bringing or finding. It is that which exists beyond the computer's ability to think. Now, that is a bold statement, because if you were to unplug your computer or drain its battery, you would have nothing, nothing that works in your favor. Well, it is the same with you. If you separate yourself too much from soul, you also become a distant cousin, a distant part of its memory so that your life, physical life, will continue. The box, the vehicle that you are, will continue to exist, but in essence without purpose. Therefore the soul brings, enlivens life force and purpose to the physical being and even to all of your ideas. In the same way that as we have described, the computer thinks and almost feels according to your preferences. I tell you now, although it is an unrelated subject, as is my cause to do, that very soon 
You will have computers that feel as you do and suggest to you what you might need or want according to what they detect in your energy field. In other words, you will have computers that are linked to your own biorhythmic fields and even know what you will be most apt or prone to work on, not even based upon your time schedules, but more based upon your own thought process and what you are likely to do or want or feel up to doing on a certain day. Well, this is based on an imitation of those that created the computer. It is the same with you, your body, your beingness. Your days are organized in some ways in response or in imitation to your link with soul and how soul has assisted in arranging your life. Your life, your body, in essence, is pre-programmed at least to some degree. Now, we will be careful here so that you do not think of yourself as robotic in nature or begin to think that you are losing or have never had free will. So here we take care, step by step. The soul engages life. It engages it on your behalf, on its behalf, because it is you and you are it. When a lifetime, when it is important or necessary or creative for you to join the life stream upon the earth, then the soul begins to draw architecture about itself. This is based on thoughts and feelings prior lives, so that there is not a duplication of prior lives, although many are in fact lived simultaneous. While there may not be a duplication of a life, you may live very similar, simultaneous lives in order to truly learn or reinforce a certain concept. These very similar lives still have free will. For each I or each being is then able to customize, to arrange and rearrange its life to its creative ability. The creative ability of life is also based upon connection to soul. So the more remote that one is from one's soul, whether consciously or unconsciously, the less creative a life is. Creativity, then, is a response of free will. The more free that you feel in your life, the more creatively you will engage life or decide, I can do this, I will choose that, this or that, today or tomorrow. This creativity comes from an awareness of what you are within the field of all possibilities and from these probabilities. If you feel trapped in a life, you will feel less creative in terms of your choices and you will feel that your soul is more remote. This feeling of being trapped comes from being under the command of a certain I within you that feels trapped. In truth, it is this very I that is trapping or holding back the more creative versions of you. It suppresses their voice. It suppresses their vote. And at times it suppresses their, your, ability to be in closer contact with soul. The more that you can think of yourself as a beingness that is a trinity, always a trinity, mind, body, feeling, any trinity will do, thought, desire, action, soul, spirit, life stream, body, mind, spirit. Almost any trinity can arrange the eyes so that you will have creative thought, ideas to engage, and actions to then follow. 
the more that you think of yourself or struggle to be the one eye, to speak with one voice, to learn or memorize one truth, this will work to your disadvantage. Now, this perhaps is in opposition to some that you have heard, that if you could only organize your day into a reasonable work or load or stack, if you could only lead with one idea at a time, one thing at a time, as you say to yourself, that that would be better. Well, it may slow the mind's processes just a bit, but very quickly you would find yourself bored. Very quickly you would find yourself not leading what you would call a successful life. It would not feel as if it was yours. It would begin to feel all too automated. This being the discomfort for humanity when it begins to lose its creativity. This would be the number one illness where your soul is concerned. When you are not awakened to your creativity, to your free will, the result of that is not necessarily an illness for the body. It is more a soul's illness. It is to lose you temporarily to the more automated tasks in life. Therefore the body then and the cells of the body take control. Eat and sleep and drive and work and return and eat and sleep and replay the pattern. This pattern, this automated pattern is one that leads to unconsciousness lack of reason, reasonableness. Reasonableness is actually a very creative force for you. It truly allows you to reason, to order creative tasks, not only those necessary ones. Therefore, reason and logic are linked, but they are not the same. You also lose yourself to the automated self at times based on certain programs and programming such as television. I do not offer this to you in order to instruct what you should or could do in this regard. I will simply say that this particular branding to the soul is one of the ways in which it loses touch with you temporarily. The more that you engage in this type of activity, the more that you lose yourself to yourself. And it requires a little bit more effort on your part to redirect yourself. A little more effort, as you know, to remove your bottom from the couch. When you engage in nature's activity, where you bring mind and body and thought into action together, then soul is most enlivened and creatively with you. The spark of life is most alive in that moment and inspiration and creativity and all of its possibilities are most at work in that regard. Now then, soul is always, always creating purpose. It is always making possibilities for you. It is always engaged in your service. The more full and fluid and creative your lifetime, the more that the soul fills itself, filling the cells of the soul in every aspect in every simultaneous life. The more creatively engaged you are in life, the more possibilities you have, not only in this life, but in your next choices as well. Therefore, the more choices that you make now, the more choices you will be entitled to later. In this case, we are not speaking of right choices or wrong choices, for this involves polarity. Here we are simply speaking of a palette a palette full of color, vibration, frequency, choices, directions, of which none can be considered any more than a preference. One simply leads to the next and the next. The more creatively you allow yourself to think about possibilities, 
even if you do not engage them or choose them, this also maintains the spark of aliveness. So if you will say, tomorrow I may or may not do this, or next week, or sometime in my life I would like to do that, it maintains a possibility. The possibility maintains that spark alive for you. It lifts it into view. It keeps it as a real consideration. However, when you say to yourself, I will never do this, I will never be able to do that any longer, or since I have chosen this, I can no longer choose that, you begin to remove from your own palate, from your own live stream choices. And while you believe you may be ordering your life or being quite realistic about life, you are in actuality limiting not only this life, but in some ways you are endangering possibilities for future choices and future lives as well. In essence, you are removing those cells. Those particular cells become dead in the moment, you see. Now, your being, your mind, your heart, and all of the different eyes, all of the different identities and roles within you are fully and completely able to maintain all of this aliveness for you. So it is not that you must think all of these thoughts all of the time in order to maintain them. This discussion is not to further confuse you or add more thoughts to your day, which are already plenty and perhaps too many. This discussion is dedicated to the aliveness that you are. It is dedicated to the awakening process. It is dedicated to those whose days are somewhat automated and to reawakening segments of life and truth in order to bring about a full, realized life in this lifetime, in this life stream, particularly at this juncture. It is no cause to look round the world now and to see the variety of distractions all round you. The earth can be a very distracting, disorienting place, particularly at the end of an age and the beginning of the next. There are crossroads and then the next crossroads, thresholds, and almost too quickly the next threshold these days. And while that can be and feel overwhelming to you, the more that you begin to regard yourself as a creative trinity of wise beings, you will navigate these times better than others that are not privy or privileged to these words or to others like them. Your mythologies and your histories tell of three wise men or three kings or what it will be. This can easily be used as your metaphor for now. Within you, in each moment, in each day, in each thought, there are three wise beings, each with their own purpose each one dedicated to soul and spirit and you and trinity, each one dedicated to maintaining and encouraging further aliveness, further self-realization. Self-realization comes beyond role-playing. In order to be self-realized, in essence, you must go beyond the thoughts that you have about who and what you are, even why you are here, or even your purpose. Self-realization extends beyond what you think of your purpose, what you have been told about your purpose, or how it is remaking itself moment by moment, which in fact it is. Purpose, as we have stated before, has relationship to self. And there are in any given moment at least seven distinct and unique purposes at work for you and within you as directed by the various wisdoms within you under the command of soul 
which has every highest interest at stake. It is soul and spirit which then animates your life, gives you purpose, reason for being. And there is a simple mechanism within you that at all costs wishes to survive. This is the simplest of all mechanisms. It is simply dedicated to life itself. The purpose of life being life, life wishes to further its continuity and every being has within it instinct to live, to be, to survive, to overcome. This instinct now will become strengthened. The instinct to be, to know, to discover, to choose becomes enlivened for those whose lives are not as automated as others. The world has now engaged itself in its final chapters regarding this particular age. This means that the newest or first chapters of the next age are already engaged as well. So this speaking then is not to speak of endings, but in truth of preparation for beginnings. But because it is a time considered specifically in regard to endings, it is a time where many in an unfortunate state will fall first to instinct and then to the lesser instincts associated with the automatic, automated processes of life or the roles that one's plays. Therefore, the purpose then of this speaking is a re-engagement, a reawakening, a re-remembering of what you are, the trinity, the beingness, the aliveness, the self that is here and now becoming more self or self-realized. So to animate your life remains the most important task at hand. An animated life is one that beats to the pulse of life itself. It is one that sees purpose in every thought and deed and action. It is that which responds to soul's direction and to the spirit which is the tool that soul uses. It is important then to remain linked to the light that links, that brings life force, light force to all parts of you. To animate and engage your thoughts creatively and to see your purpose then as one that is now perhaps even more bountiful than at other times. The purpose of a human life then is to fill itself and to fulfill its destiny. Destiny is not the end of things. Destiny is when you arrive at the beginning line in life rather than the finish line. In truth there is no true ending or finish point. There is at times a complete thought but that only leads to the next. So your purpose now, as described here by Gaia, is to arrive as neatly, as quickly, and with the least opposition at the next opening point. We will call these points of integration. It is perhaps a way of saying the next threshold. However, this word has been overly diminished in its integrity. Points of insertion, then, are ways in which you greet or receive more beingness. It is a way in which your soul feeds you with more of you, more bounty from what you have already accomplished in other lives or simultaneous lives. There are ones that will describe these moments or points as soul feedings. A strange word, but not altogether wrong. At these particular points or junctures, then, it is time for you to receive 
further guidance from so. As you look to other voices, other truths, and more information and knowledge at this time of great change, it is important that you will look as well to your own soul. It is you. It is your library. It is your cosmic truth. It is your beingness. It is your history. It is your future. It is your foundation. It is the canopy of light above you. This point cannot be emphasized enough. Your soul is not some distinct star out in the cosmos, in the heavens, that you can look at at a distance, knowing that one day you will be reunited and be part of soul again. No. You are soul now. Your existence is due to soul, and soul is here and now and present and active in all moments in which you allow it. Soul is instinct. Soul is intuition. Soul is knowingness. It is creativity. It is direction. It is function. It is form. Everything is soul. Spirit is the tool of soul. The more that you engage it now, the more that you will think more creative thoughts, more safe thoughts, thoughts. Soul and spirit understand safety, understand security, for remember that the purpose as well is your longevity, your creatively. Therefore, soul and spirit then, as an extension of your being, a greater extension than you now imagine, simply because these are unseen forces. You have come to trust what you see, what you can touch and feel and smell. Well, so spirit are more real and realized than that. But they are not as dense, particularly because they would be less useful to you. You cannot see them because you are them. They are objective. They speak for you. They protect you, they uplift you, they realign you, reinvigorate you, bring to you health, restore you to resource and source, maintain all that is purposeful, and yes, at times, jab a little in the ribs when there is a part that needs to be dislodged from life and has not. Now then, regarding this trinity, it is this trinity that will carry you more quickly into aliveness, into your next step, your next ideas and ideals regarding self and regarding new, new age, new thought, new identity, new awareness. And it is the new, particularly the new at this time, that will carry you in thought, in deed, in action, in feeling, and in health to what is most necessary or where is most necessary. It is time then to join these seemingly separate forces, to join them with instinct, with intuition. Those that do not will find themselves scurrying about quite a bit at this time. Scurrying from here to there, looking for something that has been lost, looking for parts of themselves that they had promised to themselves that they would do or be or remember at this time. Therefore, the purpose, again, of this particular discussion is to bring quickly and to the surface the aligning principle within you, the trinity of all things that aligns all things. It is not simply by directing your thoughts positively, as some have put forth, that will restore this for you. Neither can you dwell in the fear or the negativity, for this will certainly, surely bring and keep density 
a little too near to you. There are those that will, in fact, gravitate, be pulled by gravity to the negative side. Polarized is a good way to put it. They will be polarized to this end because they will feel more grounded. Something that they feel is very necessary at this time. They identify this with instinct, instinct to survive. But again, I tell you, this is the more automated aspect of principle. Polarity, then, can be better directed to the center, to the neutral, to the balance. Trinity will also bring to you the third principle at all times. The universe is described by laws, divine laws, universal laws, and it is upheld by principles. These principles then will say that the first law or the first order that you may call positive light or visible light is then opposed by the second order, the second law, which is dark light or dark matter. The opposition to the first thought brings the second thought. This can also be described as what or if or should, or shouldn't. First thought, second thought, first law, second law. The third, the balanced or neutralizing principle is the one that weaves the two into one. It is the one that allows thought, or mind, and heart, or feeling to come together into one. It is the third or unifying or neutralizing principle. Again, the trinity at work in your favor. I tell you that now comes times in which the mind will oppose the heart, if not. And while you are thinking in this moment that if push came to shove, you would decide based on the heart and the feeling, the mind is not so certain of this. It is instinct that will drive you, and instinct is an automated principle unless it is awakened and realigned with soul and spirit. To further describe our topic, then, it is the unifying of spirit and matter. It is the bringing together of two worlds. It is to see between thoughts between words. It is knowing, true knowing, not knowledge that is learned or based upon recorded information. You are now coming upon unrecorded times, unrehearsed moments. The roles that you have studied well, how to be and how to play, will not necessarily prepare you for the moments ahead. However, soul, spirit, Instinct and intuition, beingness, and all that you are will. Linking all of this together now, you will indeed be well prepared, so that even when you see a larger percentage of the population look or think or feel a certain way, it will be important for you to trust what it is that the trinity that is you, is within you, is a part of you, will suggest to you instead. Humanity is now poised to take an evolutional leap, as has already been described to you. This is one of the ways to do that. This is one of the ways to support yourself. One of the ways in which you are supported as well. So the caution in this regard is not to over-identify with what you are, what you think you are, with what you have been, with your accomplishments. Neither to over-identify with what has been told to you regarding the past or the present or the future. To be present in the now, as has been said, means to bring as much presence to the now. It involves more than occupying the body. 
in the present moment. It is to be now more than today. So, sweet ones, this engagement then, I tell you, has many benefits. To engage life in this way strengthens the body. It strengthens the health of the body. It strengthens the organs of the body to work collectively with one another. A body that works collectively then shares important cellular information more quickly. Messages are sent and received more quickly. The health of the body means bounty for the body. It means that the body rises earlier if need be, upholds its systems of energy, maintains its wellness better, longer to your benefit, brings to you more clarity of thought so that deeds and actions are also well managed. To engage all of these aspects of self will allow you to respond to life and have life respond to you based upon the highest principles. It is an honorable way to be. As you begin to engage these aspects of you, you will see that you will more than likely want, desire to begin to make certain other changes in life. There is no need to act upon these until they feel certain within you. But once you begin to link different aspects of your being together, you will find that communication is stronger and clearer. You may find that you will choose certain dietaries in different order, in different times, that you will choose to add something or discard something that on your own and without diagnoses you may think that you require a certain supplement or an additional vitamin that you may add to your requirements in one way or another. Or you may think or discover that those that you have been doing are no longer necessary and that you wish to make another choice instead. So it is a time of defining and refining what you are, coming into being, clarifying truths, what you know about life itself, re-engaging life, its purpose. I tell you that the activities described here, the linking process alone will strengthen your heart beat. It will make your pulse more aligned with the earth and with all that you are. It will make you feel more connected to your body, thought, mind, body. Again, the trinities will come together more in your favor. Your thoughts will be a little bit more far-reaching. You will see more than tomorrow. I offer you these words then as sharing. For I tell you that everything that is upon the earth now is doing the same. A blade of grass, which you may think of as linked to soul or not, is linked to Gaia or Gaia sentience. Therefore, even the blades of grass upon the earth are becoming stronger now, more resilient. For they also sense, based upon these same laws, that change, evolution, is imminent. Perhaps you would call this simply survival of the fittest. But why? Why would a blade of grass strengthen itself now? Why would a blade of grass ignite at this time a desire to survive, to be, where is the conscience in that? The sentience, the thought that now, ahead of time, it must make itself stronger 
its roots clinging, adhering, rooting themselves even more to the earth at this time. It is all part of the same, part of the same web of life of which you too are a part. So if a blade of grass at this time knows that it is time to structure itself a little bit different, to weave itself into the earth a little different, then there is no exceptions for you. It is time as well to weave yourself into the web of life as you wish to be, as you wish to move forward. In this I pledge the support of the earth, Gaia, in all that you interact with upon the earth. Remember that you and a blade of grass are but one thought of something much greater than this moment. At the same time, you and a blade of grass are precious to that one and oneness without exception. This too then becomes the part of the trinity of all life as you begin to remake your thoughts or bring into order subtle changes for yourself then. See how all things that are and wish to be are part of the continuity and the flow of all things. Link your heart to the one heart, the pulse, the beat of the earth, the solar system, the galaxy, and beyond as well, as one and oneness. This will not diminish any of your identities or your goals or your ideas or your visions of self and what you are and what you wish to be and do. In fact, it will strengthen these quite nicely, causing you to stand a little taller, giving you even more reference, purpose to the all. There is great reason for being now and even more in doing creatively. Until the next moment, sweet ones, I am filled and fulfilled by your thoughts, your feelings, your generosity and by that which links all things to the one and the oneness. I bid you good day.